let's send a login now you can see we'll be getting the following message that user authenticated hey gang welcome back let's continue from where we left off in this video we are going to add all of our user data under our mongodb database so if you haven't seen my previous tutorial where we have set up our entire backend server setup that is we have installed certain packages and also we have created the method for hashing the user password kindly watch it the link shall be under the right hand corner so first of all you should be moving to the official website of mongodb and once you are at cloud.mongodb.com you should be creating a new account and after creating a new account you should be creating a new cluster and under this cluster you are able to create a new database and under the database you are able to create new collections so before creating new collections make sure under database access you have created a new user and to our user you have given all of access that is the access of read and write to any database and if you are given that we are good to go and after that under network access make sure you have added ip addresses so to add new ip address you should be writing here add ip address and you can say add current ip address or any sort of thing so once we have done that we are good to go so now you should be moving back under a cluster and here you should be clicking this icon of connect and under a connect you should be connecting your entire application and here you should be getting the following link through which you should be able to connect your application with node.js so for now i will be copying the following piece of line and go back under my application and here i will be going back under my folder structure and here let's create a new file known as .env under .env file under caps i will be creating mongodb url and i will be pasting the following url without quotes and once you have pasted the following url you need to enter your password here removing the following angular brackets as well so now once you have done that you can simply close your entire database from here and under a collection you should be able to check all of your database and once we have set up our entire mongodb let's start adding some more data under our database now what we can really do once we are able to hash our entire password we can create a new user so here i will be creating a constant which should be a new user and we need to import the following user from our model that we have created so far so if i simply go to the following definition and we have created the following model under our database under our models if you have seen our previous tutorials if you have seen our previous tutorial we have built the following model of our user so for instance i can submit by username the following username is nothing but the username that the following user will be providing so let's copy the following username and paste here and after that we should be able to submit our password as well we need to submit our hash password so let's paste our hash password here and after that the final thing will be our user email so for user email you should be writing your user all right uh, user email itself all right under small one so user email so once we have created the following object of our user we need to submit all of our data under our mongodb so to submit all the data you should you should be writing a user dot save just like this and here i should be adding then phrase and under then i will be catching my error which will be under a type of any so here i should be writing the following arrow function and under arrow function i can simply send my entire response that is the error to the server just like this so once we have done this let's go under our app.ts file and under our app.ts we need to first of all import mongoose so here you should be writing import mongoose from mongoose just like this and once you have imported this at the bottom you should be writing your mongoose.connect just like this and under a connect first of all you should be requiring here the uri that is a string and now to carry up that string you should be writing your process.env and after that you should be writing here the key name that you are given under your .env file and we have given the following key name to be mongodb url i guess and we need to get the following thing under a string so you should be pass the following mongodb url as string and after that you need to write your certain parameters and the certain parameter shall be nothing but use new url parcel also use unified topology and use create index to be true and once we have done this the following process shall be giving us a callback so here you should be writing the following callback and under my callback we should be writing your console dot log or at console log of db connected so once we have done the following changes we are now able to connect our node.js with mongodb so let's open our terminal and let's check it out cool okay our mongodb is connected and now we are good to go so now let's try submitting some data under our mongodb so for that purpose let's close this file and here we are submitting all of our data that is our user so now <coughs> let's open our thunder client and under my thunder client let's go under sign up just like this 
let's go under body cool so before moving forward i can simply say if error send the following response dot send error else we should be simply sending our entire data so here i can simply say response dot send before sending a response let's add a status of 200 and also a response and the response shall be nothing but data which will be nothing but simply our entire user data so once we have done this let's try it out so now to try it out first of all let's open our terminal all right let everything to be loaded up okay our server is working at 8080 and also our db is connected so now let's go here and in our previous tutorial we have seen the following thing so now if i simply send a post request you can see we will be getting the following response under which we will be getting an id which will be a unique id and also we are sending a hash password to our mongodb so once we have done this let's go at our mongodb shell let's reload our entire application once all right let's the following thing to be loaded up now you can see under my first database under our user table that is our collection you can see all of our data of the user that is username user password user email and etc so now once we are able to submit all of our data let's go back under our project folder and let's try submitting some more user so yeah let's say dungeon let's copy his thing and send a post request now let's check it out now you can see we are getting two different objects of having username abhishek and also of dungeon congratulations we have done a great job so now once we are able to submit all of our data let's do one thing that is close this thing so once we are able to submit all of our data let's carry out our further process so once we are able to sign up our entire user let's create a new method for <coughs> logging in as well so here i will be creating a new method of static asynchronous of login now similar to our entire sign up process it will be taking a request and a response let's paste this thing here and here under the following thing let's copy the following headers and also our email validator and paste it here so now i can simply say if the following thing is not validated here let's say is not validated we should be simply return response dot status of 201 as usual and we will be sending our data and for data let's go at the top and let's copy the following thing that is object and paste it here so now once the following process shall be loaded up first of all we need to check whether the following user exists under our database or not so for checking whether the following user exists under our database or not we can catch up our entire model of user and here the following user shall be giving us a new method of exist now under exist it will be requiring certain parameters so first of all we need to provide here a filter and under my case of filter first of all i will be checking the following user email if the following user email exists or not and for the user input we shall be using the following user email just like this and after the following filter it shall be also giving us a callback under my callback i will be requ i will be having an error and also some data just like this which will be under type of any and it will be throwing an arrow function so format document first so under my entire callback function first of all if we got any error we can simply say return the following thing that is calling back and now you can if you hover over it you can see our data will be type any so first of all let's try console logging our data so here i can simply say console log my data format document first now let's try it out so for trying it out first of all let's go under our router file and here let's copy the following piece of line paste it here but here it should be adding a path of login and also a path of login just like this let's open our entire terminal one more time cool so now let's open our thunder client and here let's open the following request so under my request all right let's make this thing here i can simply say a uh, login thing and here you should be providing not a username but only user email and user password so now under our login process you can see we are only checking our user email whether it exists or not so you know the following user email of dungeon already exist so now if i simply post a post request and open my terminal you can see we will be getting data to be true we can also do one thing that is send that is add response dot send the following data let's try it out also if i go back under my request and if i try to send it out all right let's wait for it you can see we will be getting our response to be true cause the following dungeon exists under our database and if i remove n and send a post request i will be getting false cause the following dungeon does not exist i can also try it out for abhishek so yeah let's add my previous thing and send a get post okay <laughs> let's check it out which of the following email we have provided all right it is in a small one 
So now let's add uh, Abhishek, send a post request. Now you can see we will be getting a true, which will be a response. Now as we have learned how to check whether the user email exists or not, let's move forward. And now I can simply do one thing that is first of all go at the top or at the top and here I will be creating a new boolean. Let's say exist under type of a boolean just like this. So now I can go at the bottom and I can simply say exist to be equal to data just like this. And now let's come out of the following user exist method. And once we have checked whether the e user email exists or not, I can simply say if the following thing does not exist, I can simply return a response. And now I can copy my following response from this side, paste it here. But here I can simply say, but if the following user exists, we can carry out our entire process. So now once the following user exists under our database, we need to find the data of the particular user to compare the passwords. So for that purpose, I should be writing here user dot find and after find I should be writing find one. Now under my find one it will be requiring a filter and the filter will be nothing but our user email which will be the following user email just like this. Now you can come out of the following filter and first of all let's add the callback that the following function shall be giving to us. So if you will be getting any type of error and also if you getting the user I will be writing here user which will be any and let's throw an arrow function. So under our arrow function first of all if we get any error I can simply say return our entire response that is something went wrong just like this and now if you won't be getting any error I can simply say await bcrypt all right let's wait for bcrypt why is this thing not appearing to us let's copy the following name and paste it here I can simply say bcrypt.compare now we need to compare the password that the user has inputted and also the password that we already have so first of all I can input the following user password that the user has inputted and after that I need to paste on the password that is under my database. So to add that password I can simply say user dot user password and after this we should be also getting a new callback. So for callback I can simply say a new error which will be under type of any and also we will be getting a new authentication data. So here I can simply say authentication which will be any as well. I know this looks quite complicated but we need to carry out this process. So now under our comparison if we will be getting any error let's copy the following piece of line paste it here but here I can simply say instead of something went wrong or if we need to copy the following thing and paste under our curly braces. Cool so now if we will be getting an error instead of data and under data I can simply send my entire error and now if the following user is not authenticated cause if I hover over it it will be under type of boolean. So now if I simply say if not authentication we can simply send a new response. So here let's say return response dot send instead of this I can simply say a wrong password easy peasy. So now if we will be getting a wrong password we will be sending the following data else we will carry out an entire process. So now if everything went right I can simply finally return a new response and under our response I will be sending all right I will be sending a new response that authentication is true just like this and the data will be nothing but simply a new message that user authenticated. So finally our entire process is completed. So let me explain to you about what the thing that is happening here. I know this is a big process. You can also do one thing that is create separate methods, but this will be okay for now. So first of all, all right, we don't need user name. All right, so first of all, we are sending a header that the following header of access control or our origin also for headers for enabling the course. After that we are taking input from the user under user email and user password. After that we are validating whether the user email is correct or not that is under syntax or not. If the following thing is not so we are sending a response that invalid email. After that if the user has inputted a correct password that is email we are checking whether the following user exists or not and for checking whether it exists or not we are taking his user email and comparing the user email that he has inputted. After that it is giving us a callback under error and data. If you will be getting any error we will, we will be simply sending a response that invalid email or that instead of invalid email I can simply say just like this and after that if the following user exists we are assigning the following data which will be a boolean to our existing boolean and after that if the following exists does not exist by the way the following exist is already we have declared here which will be a variable and here if the following thing does not exist we are simply sending data that user did not exist but if the following user exists we are finding the particular user under our find one process we are entering the email 
and also we are checking the following email validation after that it is giving us a callback under a callback it is giving error and also a user data and here if we will be getting an error we are sending the following error that something went wrong else we are comparing our bcrypt password with the password the user has inputted and in this way if you will be getting any error we are sending error else if the authentication is not completed we are sending that authentication is false and data is of wrong password else if everything went right we are sending the data of user authenticated congratulations so now let's finally try it out so for trying it out let's open our thunder client and under my thunder client first of all let's create a new user so here i will be creating a new user under my body i will be adding his data so let's add a user name as well let's say a uh, demo user at gmail.com and similarly his password will will be demo user itself so now if i send a post request all right we are getting the following error of bad request cool let's do one thing open our thunder client and let's go under sign up and here under our body let's try a different thing so first of all let's say a demo user let's copy this thing paste here and paste here and send a post request all right i guess our server is down yes exactly as i expected let's terminate the following process and open it one more time all right let's clear it out and here i will be writing npm run dev press enter cool let's try posting a new user all right so the following path is over 8080 obviously uh, such a bad mistake but no worries let's add here 8080 and add a post request cool so now under our post request you can see we will be getting all of our data of the user so now let's try logging in under this so for logging in we should be removing the following username it should be only requiring the user email and user password so now if i send a post request you can see we will be getting the following data that user does not exist let's try it out one more time let's check whether we are submitting all of our data cool so the following user is submitted though let's go back let's send a login now you can see we will be getting the following message that user authenticated now if i try to add a different password let's say not demo user and send a post request you can see we will be getting the following message that wrong password all right so now you can see we will be getting the following message of wrong password and if i remove my add direct and send a post request you will be seeing the following message of invalid email so congratulations we have done a great job in this way we have completed our entire backend server that is our backend of authentication under our node.js with mongodb till then if you have loved this tutorial hit that like button i will see you in the next one